it's the extremist movie debate. And tonight we're talking 2017's Lady Bird. I'm Nathan. Oh, hey. That's Nathan. I'm Ethan. One of us is going to love it. One of us is going to hate it. Let the coin decide your fate. Nobody told you that. Mm -mm. I hate it. I love it. Hey, guys, don't jump out of a moving car during this episode because spoilers are ahead. Uh, Ethan, oh, this movie currently holds an outstanding 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, And since you hate this movie, this first question uh, comes to you. This comes from Alexandra McCarran of Women's Voice for Change. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds legitimate to me. (laughs) This is just like last year's Oscars for you. So Alexandra says, Lady Bird is a brilliant little movie that deals with ideas both big and small. But most powerful is the relationship between Lady Bird and Marion. It is harsh and funny and sometimes hard to watch. But it is undeniably and eternally there. So as a parent with children that you're going to have to, you know, potentially have conflict with and deal with growing up. I have kids. Yeah. Cool. I think so. News to, News to all of us. <laughs> I think there's, a, unless there's tiny ghosts running around your house. <laughs> how, how would you feel, how do you feel this movie kind of deals with, you know, the relationship between mom and daughter? You have uh, one, four to five seconds. Uh, one word abusive. And I think that it's important to note that because you have Laurie Metcalf, who sure did a great job, but plays a horrible, horrible mother to this woman who just needs somebody to be there and love her and care for her. And instead she's just constantly talking down to and yelling at and belittling and not letting her do anything that she wants and it's you know it's not physically abusive but i think that we're at a point in this country where we can understand that emotionally abusive can be just as powerful and so emotionally abusive mother is the one we're supposed to sympathize with throughout this whole movie let alone the fact that this movie is not about lady bird johnson which was really very misleading going into it and i was quite disappointed Okay, uh, Nathan, you have 45 seconds to respond. Yeah, I thought this was a sequel to Jackie. Uh, it isn't. Uh, I, I don't think that this is an abusive relationship. I think that it's uh, it's actually one of the most authentic parent-child relationships I've seen in any movie. Uh, and the fact that a number of people that uh, have seen it and I've talked to have said that it is uh, very close to the relationship that they've had with their own parents. And uh, I, I think that there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. And in the case of Lady Bird, it is a film of great empathy and I think that you see the characters uh, in moments of great triumph, you see the characters at their lowest, and I think that in the case of Laurie Metcalf's character of the mother, uh, we see her at, at both sides of, of both extremes, I guess. And I think that uh, the, the problem here is that both women are such strong characters. Thanks, Nathan. Characters. I gotta cut you off there. This next question comes to you, though. This is from Cole Smithy of colesmithy.com. That, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, that website. Yeah. Uh, Cole Smithy says, Lady Bird is a movie that fails on the most important level of maintaining empathy with its faux nonconformist protagonist. These failings are masked by an abusive use of music, quick cutting, and some over-leveraged emotional gesturing between the mother and daughter to play a viewer's heartstring as the lasting theme of the movie. So. Okay. Y- yeah, I... That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. That's the life. only one you could find, huh? <laughs> yeah, there was only one yeah. bad review, and that was the thing that stood out. It wasn't Armand, huh? Oh um, yeah, I, I couldn't find any. Oh, he actually liked it. So what? Yeah, Don't so, surprising. Wow. Nathan, just talk forty-five seconds about how, how wrong you think this guy is. Uh, I think that he talks about the quick cutting, which I think is a strange criticism. Uh, this is a movie that's about ninety minutes long, and takes place over the course of a year or more, and we see. Uh, these people's lives uh, sort of unfold in, you know, I mean, it's condensed, obviously, but it feels like we're actually watching them grow and change over the course of this year. I mean, your senior year of high school is is a huge one, and I think you do go through a lot of changes, and we see Lady Bird do that. The, this idea of her being faux conformist, as if that's a, a, a thing in the movies. Faux nonconformist. Uh, faux non, faux mm-hmm. conformist. Faux nonconformist, is that what he said? Yeah. I mean, that's the point of the character, is that she's constantly changing to fit whichever social group she needs to be in at that okay. time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ethan, you have 45 seconds to respond. Uh, yeah, it's great that we focus on this girl in a big year of her life, and it's a nice coming-of-age story, just like Juno was. Jack. Garden State. Any other coming-of-age movie where they have Jack. an issue with their parents. I don't understand Jack, but I'll take it. Mouth. It's been a while. 
Um, I think that it is very much faux nonconformist because you do have this person who thinks that she's so edgy and hip and can fit into any social group and wants so desperately, like in her essence, wants so desperately to be friends with the popular kids. And then in the end, sure, finds out that, oh, the popular kids suck. Great. So she has that lesson, but she still wants to be there. So, you know, this character still sucks and I don't really care at all about her. And back to the abusive thing, in the end of this movie, she comes right, around to there. apologize to her I gotta cut you mother. off there, Ethan. But anyways, we're going to open the floor for discussion, so if you want to finish that point, go ahead and try. You have two minutes. And that's the, that's the climactic moment of this movie, is where all of a sudden her mom isn't there when she goes off to college. She ends up in the hospital and calls her and apologizes to her, as if her mom was right all along. I don't think that's what the movie's saying at all. And in I fact, think that's exactly see what it the, One of the most powerful moments in this movie is after the parents drop Lady Bird off at the airport so she can go off to college. And by the way, her father is, played by Tracy Letts, is a, a source of of a emotional ballast throughout this entire film to both his daughter and his wife. No, he's just uh, complacent. He, uh, uh, he, he drops... He is frame filler. No, no, definitely not. And uh, she gets dropped off at the airport. Uh, the mother doesn't want to get out of the car because she feels betrayed by her daughter because her daughter kept secrets from her. And she ends up... We stay in the car with the mother and she ends up circling back around because she realizes that she's made a mistake. Most movies would have left the mother. But the fact that Greta Gerwig, the writer-director of this movie, stays with the mother shows that she has a lot of understanding for what the mother is going through, just as much as she understands what Lady Bird is going through. And I think that's what makes this a much better coming-of-age film than most coming-of-age movies we see. It's it's a genre that's that's huge. I mean, how many movies have we seen? I mean, just recently, Boyhood and Moonlight. And I think that this is this deserves to be in, in those rarefied Edge of 17. That's also a really good coming-of-age <laughs> movie. If it was going to be a good coming-of-age movie, then the mother would have ran to her at the terminal and met her before she no, got that would have made it a very bad nope, coming of age movie. A because then it would have meant that all of a sudden both characters changed. Lady Bird regretted her ways, and her mother regretted her ways, and they came to meet in the middle. And instead, we have the mother remains absent and cold and distant. And then she the doesn't end, Lady cold Bird and we see her break and down apologizes. And not well, only does, that, but this movie is a really, Lady Lady good, a really good portrayal of not saying that America. Because you're emotionally America. abusive doesn't mean that you're also not manipulative. It's not middle America, they're in California, but middle class America uh, in uh, 2002, 2003, when this film takes place, the fact that she thinks she can run back into the airport, but because of increased security, it's 2002, she can't go. And so that's, that's a great the subversion of that cliche. And on that note, I'm gonna cut you guys off. That's the only reason. How did you really feel about this movie? Well, what's extraordinary about Lady Bird is that she turns out to, uh, she's eventually uh, first lady of the United States. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. It's a very good story. She's she also marries Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's fascinating. Uh, her name a lot of people didn't know that this is all a real story. Her name is Lady is. Bird? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the name no. of Hank Hill's dog. Not, not. <laughs> are we talking about Lady Bird Johnson or this character? Uh, whatever. Lady this movie's is awesome. It's amazing. Uh, I picked it as the best film of uh, 2017, and it had a lot of competition because this was a really good year for movies. Um, I just, I love it so much. I think that it, it really understands who uh, these characters are. I don't think there's a phony note in the entire film. It's rare to see uh, the the way that, that Greta Gerwig compresses time in this film mm -hmm. um, is, is really impressive because she packs so much into uh, a short amount of time and yet we never feel like we're missing anything. We never feel like we're losing who these characters are. They, they're always really sharply in focus and I think that's, mm -hmm. um, that's something that's really difficult to do. Uh, and she makes it seem, I think the reason this movie isn't getting um, a lot of uh, uh, acclaim for its editing and its uh, direction, I mean she was nominated for Best Director but um, I, I think this is a really well directed movie but because because the craft is somewhat hidden, it seems almost effortless. And I think that she deserves a lot of credit for that. And there's a lot of focus on these two main characters of Lady Bird and her mother, and there's a buttload of subtlety in both of them, especially on the way Metcalf. A Laurie buttload, Metcalf. a metric That buttload. is the scientific measurement of <laughs> yeah. it, yes. Especially Lori Metcalf's character. And Who deserves a buttload of very awards. So. Um, she's so good at this. And I think that a lot of people miss those subtleties and don't get as much out of this movie as is actually in it. I, I've also seen criticism that, um, and of course, once this movie, this movie was universally beloved, and then once it uh, started getting all of this awards yeah, consideration, the backlash starts, it always happens. Uh, I've seen a lot of criticism that it's saying, well, what's so special about this character? Because we've seen a lot of teenagers grow up in films. Um, but I think what's special about this character is that she is completely ordinary. And I think that a lot of people see themselves in Lady Bird, whether you're 
you know, a girl or, or, you know, if you grew up in Sacramento or if you were alive at the time that she is, I think there's a lot of universality in this movie. And everybody's story is important. Absolutely. And a lo- and it's not just Lady Bird's story either. A lot of the fringe characters get, I, I could talk about this movie. Yeah, sorry, Jeff. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> no, I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let you have one more thought. I'm just going to say, thought, all of the supporting gonna... characters get Stop their looking own. this way. Looking the the dad is wonderful in this movie. <laughs> Loved him. And the friends, and the brother, and... Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> it's the, it, I'm a Chalamaniac. <laughs> oh my god. All right, well, we get to say that now. This is the worst. <laughs> Jeff hasn't seen Lady Bird. I'm literally in hell. What would you guys read this movie? <laughs> Go ahead. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. How about Thunder? All of it. I've seen it twice. <laughs> I'll also give it a 10 out of 10. I love this movie, and I don't have a ton of thunder for it, but a smidge. Excuse me? I, I'm not thinking about it still, but I will happily watch it at any moment of any day. You go, Greta. You keep making those movies. I'll keep seeing them. Yeah. All right, Ethan, where can we find us? <laughs> Here, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, emd.panspending.com, artificialwood.panspending.com. There's an echo in here. All right. Uh, thanks to everyone who contributes and watches and all that fun stuff. Thanks, Nathan. Thank thanks, you. Nathan. Love you. Good night.